Hello, Deborah and Eric. Here is your new home away from home, providing you with a little video. Hopefully I do a better job with this one and can actually get it to open when you receive it versus the last one that I filmed. I just wanted to give you a walk around of the exterior and point out as many features as I can think of. And then I'll go into the interior and do the same. And we'll also give you a full rundown again in January when we uh, meet for you to pick it up in Ozark, Alabama. All right, so what we have here, and I'll start right at the very nose, is all of your towing equipment that you're going to need. There's, there's more than just this, but here's your chains built on either side. So this is how you'll store them. This is your emergency brake cable. We'll go into that in more detail when we meet. And this is your power cable, which has this really cute little nook so that it doesn't accidentally sit face up and get water in it. So you just pop that into place and that stays safe. Uh, you've got pins for everything. So this is your hitch pin. We have this really cool lock that goes on here. It has a key and this will clip in and over um, to, so sorry, I just realized I had the camera off to the side, um, to uh, lock the ball so that nobody steals the RV. So a little, a little security feature that we are selling with the RV to you. Other points for hookup, you've got pins again on this side and the same thing over here. And what I'm stepping around is the propane tank case, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so this is your power jack for raising the ball hitch up or lowering it to level when you get somewhere. This is all power. Every feature in this RV is powered. So as I press either the up or the down button, it'll raise the RV up and down. And we also, by the way, are including this um, trailer jack block, which you are going to need. And it's absolutely amazing and very sturdy. It definitely beats using a piece of wood like most people do. Okay, so here's the power jack. And you'll see that it's slowly coming up when I'm pressing up. And then I'm bringing it back down, and that's it coming back down. So in the event that you run into a power issue or this malfunctions, you're not stuck. There is a um, tool that I'm going to show you inside the RV in one of the storage areas where you would put it in here and hand crank, which is super easy to use, not no trouble at all. Now you've got your propane tanks. These are huge. These are not your typical grill propane tanks. And you'll see I have two of them hooked up with a, um, what do they call them? Uh, measure, basically, to let you know what your um, propane level is at. And that's red right now because both propane tanks, as you can see, are off. These are 32.4 liters. So these will be full when you come to pick up. We're going to top both of them off for you. Now you switch, you have a switching module here. You can see you've got the little arrow on the side. You just turn that when one tank runs out, you turn it over and it will pull propane from the other tank and vice versa, depending on which one you start with. You wanna make sure when you do this that you start and stay with the same one instead of switching back and forth, let one drain out completely before you switch over. Now I'm gonna turn this on and I want you to watch how the regulator and the level works. It's gonna go as soon as I open up. You saw that. Now it doesn't just shut down and go right back to full red. It takes a minute for the um, gauge, that's the word I was looking for, <laughs> the gauge to register and it will slowly start turning back to red. So that's your propane system. The tank cover is super easy to use. You've got these little oop, neural nuts here and you unscrew these if you want just top access and this will flip open and you're gonna wanna keep that in the direction of travel, right? The airflow. Or you do what I do, which is the most sensical way to do it. And here I'm gonna have to put the camera off a little bit. And you just take it. Bing, bang, boom, as they'd say. Just slide it right over. You don't have to secure this. It stays in place and it is not bothered by the wind at all when you're traveling. So that is really secure. Never had a problem with it. And you've got your two batteries back here you were asking about. These are brand new with the RV. 
So they're no issue. They're a little over a year old. Just like any other battery, um, when the unit is plugged in, they recharge. And then when it's stored, they might run low, depending on how long you have it in storage. But not that big a deal. They charge up super quick. And it's just like any other battery for your vehicle. Um, at some point, you're going to have to replace them. In the front, this is going to be your big kitchen window. And you're going to notice that they have the smiling light, as I call it. I use that as an identification point for people when they uh when i say hey we're at spot 17 come see us at the the campground but if case the uh the spot um is not illuminated like the number of the rv spot i'll just say look for the smiley light rv <laughs> and i know it's kind of hard to see in the sunlight right now but the switch for that is what they call the docking light station not the smiling light <laughs> you just turn that off You'll see it's off and then turn it back on. She pops on. So you got a little LED light and a switch there. Now, coming around the RV, you're going to see this first button right here. Like I said, everything is power. And it says retract and extend. That is for your stabilizers. So this is all power. So I'm going to hit retract. And you're going to see that the, I call them pause. <laughs> The paws are going to come up off the ground, and then you extend, you just go ahead and hit the extend piece, and they automatically lower. Now this is not a leveling system, this is only for stability. So if you had these up and you were in the RV, you would get a little bit of a rock with it, but when you put these down, it stabilizes the RV so that you don't get that rock. It's not anything severe. You can stay in the RV without the paws being down, but um, it's just more comfortable to have them down. Again, not, not to be used to level the RV. I'll show you that here in a moment. Uh, another point though about this system is that it is power. So you would ask, well, what do I do if it fails? It's a very good question. You have another device, just like the one I was telling you about for the jack, that would be used to manually lower or raise the um, stabilizers. So don't worry, you're not gonna get stuck. I know, Eric, you had a question about solar panel. And this is the universal solar panel jack um, port. It's already pre-wired for solar power. So if you wanted to buy an aftermarket or a Flagstaff, um, pretty much all aftermarket, but a um, solar panel assembly, you can do so, and you're pre-wired for that here. You've got your first storage area, which is pretty large, goes into the kitchen. That is the door behind the sink right there into the kitchen itself. And this is your water heater down here. So you don't wanna have anything, you don't wanna store anything on top of that. Um, this is, to help protect the water heater. So when you do put stuff in the storage space, you're not gonna have it banging up against the water heater, which is a great feature. I'm gonna take my sunglasses off, give me one second. Okay, so we talked about the tools. This little bugger here, and by the way, these are magnet tape. Those are on magnets, if you can't tell. This is to help raise and lower the jack in case the power goes out or it malfunctions. And this is here, and it's also attached by magnets, is to raise and lower the stabilizers in case you have to do it manually. This is a rack. Under here is a shelf. And then this is the most amazing griddle ever with a griddle line. Oh, what is a griddle line? Well, this is actually your grill, your pro propane line that goes right into the RV. So you're already plumbed to have the uh, grill assembly propane uh, attached to the grill. Sorry, I had a neighbor just walk by, <laughs> threw me off. So now shut that, we have keys for everything. Uh, there's one key that locks all the, what they call these slam doors. We have one key that goes to all of these doors. We have the key that goes to the shower, which is different and then the uh, keys to the doors are different. So there's three keys and we have three sets. Don't ask why. Somebody who might be recording this video may have put a set of keys in a super safe location, so safe that she forgot where she put them. So 
she ordered another set of keys and now we have three, which means you have three sets of keys for your RV. <laughs> Here you go with the um, next piece of equipment that you're always going to want to place on your RV. No matter what you own, you always want to make sure you put mesh guards over any open ports or any vents. And these are called mud dauber insect guards so that you don't have little friends building nests inside any of your units. They can clog it up, they can cause units to overheat, or they can just fly out at you and uh, cause you a bunch of problems, make you scream and run away. Okay, normally you would not touch this um, panel without gloves unless it's off or when it's running because it does say right here, hot. And when you open this up, you shall see this is your water heater. You've got one little teeny switch right here. It's the only switch you need to worry about in the exterior of the RV. And when you arrive at a location and you're plugged in with full power, you just turn that on. And that's gonna give you an additional hot water source. That's all you need to know about that part unless you start getting into servicing and winterizing and stuff like that in the future. Sorry, this is really hard to do with one hand. And that's how you lock that up. Just remember, hot. This is your kitchen window and this is your kitchen vent, which you need a like a little step stool, but I did open it for you so you might be able to see it flapping. That is for the vent range vent hood in the um, kitchen. So it just functions like a regular house where you're gonna have vent vents and, and things of that nature, um, uh, you know, pump, piping out to the outside of the RV. Over here, this is your vent to the refrigerator. You won't need to get into here for anything unless you just wanna check um, for, you know, security in the system and make sure there are no bugs which there shouldn't be. We have never had any problems uh, with this system, but this is mostly just a service door in case you run into any problems with your refrigerator. And you just take a uh, screwdriver, a flathead, and you just turn that and then this pops down just like this one does. Now this rail, you might be wondering what that is. So over here, this rack right here with the springs on it, that pops open almost like an auto one of those automatic tents and that sits right here and then the griddle grill slides right onto it and that propane line I showed you you just plug that into the back of the grill there's going to be a big space there because they're never going to put a grill right up against an RV because they don't want it to damage the exterior so they've got enough space built into it so you attach the propane line to the grill and that comes right down here and plugs in to the propane line. So you don't even have to worry about it. It's gonna pull it off the big tanks and you're gonna have plenty of propane. I, we have never run out of propane on a trip and we've been out for a couple weeks at a time and never even came close. Actually, I don't even think we went through one full tank during that time. You do have safety valves here. So you can shut the line off, obviously, when it's not in line and turn it on. And the piece that runs up to the grill itself has the same safety feature. So when we get together in January, I'll put all that together with you and show you how all of that works. Up here, you're gonna notice that you've got an exterior speaker. There's another one over here because you have a surround sound system with three zones. And this is what they call, it's one of the exterior lights that I'll show you on the control panel. And then you've got this step light down here. And you've got a stopper for the door. And the doors are what they call tension doors. Now granted, this is actually a really good day to show you this because it is super windy here, which is why I don't have your awning full open. You never wanna have your awning open or open all the way, depending on how windy it may be. But with this door, with this tension door, they, they work up to a certain point, right? And then eventually the wind, like a sail, will get a hold of them and might move them a little bit. Um, you got your screen door. I'm gonna open this for you. Super easy, and it clicks right in place. Boom, to the main door. And that's how the screen door functions. 
and this slide right here that I just moved, that's for when you're inside and you want to lock the door before bed or unlock it and open it. But I'll show you that from the interior. And if I forget in this video, I will show you when I meet you in January. We've got the patent pending stairs for Forest River, which are amazing. Super easy, super light. You don't have to do anything crazy. Um, wherever you go, you can expect to have to adjust these. You got a little adjustable pause down here. And you have to expect to do that because every um, place that you're going to stop or park or stay um, is going to have different uh, variations in level, ground, rock, maybe concrete, you name it. So this is really cool with these stairs, two fingers. I can pull the whole staircase up with two fingers without even trying. And the stairs just fold up. You don't wanna let them slam because they are spring loaded, but I just lightly press them up. And these stoppers here catch so that the staircase folds nicely. And then the door, super easy to close after. So close the door. Then when you travel, there's two schools of thought. You have your handle here that you just push up on like I'm doing right now. And you can see that it's leaving the holder and you turn it. Some people will travel like this because the wind is going over the unit. I prefer, even though it's against everything aviation related, I prefer to travel like this just in case you forget to lock the door and the door pops open, nothing's going to happen and it's not going to, um, you know, fly open on the road and then sit and do this while you're driving. Okay, so back to the stairs. I want to show you real quickly how you're going to do an adjustment. This is one of the very important pieces to the RV world. Anytime you stop somewhere, you're gonna to have to make an adjustment to the step. This is why, because your door will not close if it's not level. And you'll see that here in a moment, that when I open this screen back up, if the stair is off, this piece is too high. See how that moves? It could end up being like this, and then obviously your door is not going to close. You never want to arrive somewhere and have the, the stair be off and then try to shut your door because you will cause damage to the door itself if you try to drag it over that metal when it's not seated properly. And to make that adjustment, it's super easy. You just push this pin, boom, and grab it over here, take it out of the hole, pick this up, take the adjustment, and then you just pop the pin back in place. And sometimes these can be different settings depending on where you are and where you've stopped. So that's just something to keep in mind and we can show you that again in more detail when we get together in January. Moving to the center portion, I already showed you the speaker up there for the surround sound, the second speaker. This is a really neat um, unit for an outdoor TV. There's another clip that fits into this that universally mounts to the back of the light TVs that are made for the RV lifestyle. And then you have your power source for the television and your cable line. So you can have an exterior TV that you would just literally lift up, super lightweight, and store wherever you feel like you wanna store it when you're traveling so that you have um, an outdoor television viewing area. This, line right here this um oh my goodness i'm a loss for words today uh <laughs> this thingamabobber <laughs> is another it looks just like the one for the grill and that's because the shelf that i showed you in the front this is a prep shelf so you can place um like your meat out here your utensils when you're grilling or um you know, tongs, whatever the case may be, or beverages. Not that, you know, Ken and I drink or anything, but it's a great little shelf. And I will show you that in January as well, all set up. And you, you've you seen it, I'm sure, in the photos as well. This gets to the question that you guys had about the um, tire pressure monitoring system. 
We don't have the one that goes to the cockpit. I'm no, sorry. <laughs> you can tell I'm a pilot and a dork. Um, goes to the truck, but they're easy. Purchase them. You can get them. Um, you just put the caps on and put the uh, tire pressure monitoring unit in your vehicle and you'll be good to go. Trailer King tires are brand new. I don't even know if they have 500 miles on them, but don't quote me on that. They're just brand new. So they're under warranty as well. And then you've got the bumper here for this door. Again, the tension door, love this, right? Notice it's not trying to slam or shut. You just pop that open and you're good to go. And the same thing, you got your second set of stairs. What I love about this RV is having two entrances because you always wanna make sure you have two doors. It's just uber convenient, especially when you have a dog. Okay, now here, I wanted to show you this real quick. This little hole right here is the access point for your tool in case your um, stabilizers fail. So you'd put the tool in there and then you would hand crank your stabilizers up and down. And this is the same thing here, the retract and extend, retracting and extending. And your paws go down again, not to what? <laughs> not to level, only to stabilize. Here I already unlocked this, open this up, but this is your exterior shower. It's great for the puppers. So your dog will be very happy, hot and cold water, and a holder right here for the, the handle. You just gotta make sure that you wrap it properly when you um, get ready to travel so that the door closes very easily. And I'll show you here, the keys. How this works. This is really, like I said, hard to do with one hand. I apologize. Okay. No. Your door is locked. So this does not close, though. It's either locked or unlocked, open or closed. Um, this here is your fresh water, except it's non-potable, meaning you don't want to drink it. But what's great about this part is you just put your water hose in here you run it from your spigot your hose in here and you place water in this so that while you're on the road you can stop and wash your hands or use your toilet and wash your hands um, when you put your pump on and I'll show you your pump um, off the control panel when we get inside coming around I've turned this light on for you here's here's our rear light just easy switch and you've got your, what you'd call your exterior um, control panel, which it's really not. It's just a bunch of water and sources of information. You've got your city water connection right here. So when you get to an RV park, you'll take your um, water hose with the pressure regulator on it. We're, we're, we've got that for you. And you connect in here and then your water will run right into your RV. You won't have to worry about this anymore, but this is nice to have water, some water on board when you're traveling. Here, this port you'll only use when you are storing the RV in cold weather, and that's for the antifreeze. And then this is what they call a tank flush, where you can hook this hose up here. There's no um, backwash, so you don't have to worry about hygiene issues. When you turn this on, or the water onto this tank flush port, it flushes your black tank. So it helps get rid of those little bits of special material and deposits and also toilet paper. You've got your cable and satellite hookups here with these little waterproof um, rubber grommets. So those are on either side. Oh, it's cold out here, by the way. So I apologize if my hands are blue. All right, so that's your cable and satellite hookup. Obviously, you've got your tail lights and things of that nature. This is a uh, special little secret storage compartment. Some people put their um, poop hose in here. We've never used it. You could roll a rug up in there. You could put fishing poles, which is probably more what we would use it for. But there's a, a cap like this on both ends. You've got a ladder, which 
if you ever buy another RV in the future, do not chintz on this. You want to make sure you have a ladder all the time um, in order to get up on the top and check your seals and see how the roof is doing. And make sure, you know, if something happened, if you were in a storm, you want to be able to get up there pretty easily to see if there was any damage if something hit the top of your RV. Down here, you've got a tow hook, with, I mean, a uh, another, um, oh my gosh, yes, and we were talking about me losing my mind and not finding words and I'm having it happen again. But this is not to exceed 300 pounds, either a tow hitch. Phew, just under the wire. Um, this is the tow hitch, not to exceed 300 pounds. This is more for um, those units that come out and up that will hold kayaks or they have the big trays that extend out where you can put coolers or additional fuel or whatever on, on board. So that's something if you wanted to accessorize, that's something you can One thing we did not do is we did not go cheap. We replaced the spare as well with the Tire King heavy, more heavily rated tires. So your spare is brand new and the same age and tire type and size as the others um, on the RV. This is your back window to your bedroom. You'll see that from the interior. And then up here, you'll notice if I can zoom in, that is your prep for your camera. So you just plug your camera in and you're ready to rock and roll if you'd like a backup camera. So everything is already pre-wired for all the additional accessories. You don't have to worry about anything with major installation and wiring. Back here is your cable for power. It's quite heavy, heavy duty, comes with the RV. So don't worry, you're not going to have to go buy another one of those. But what I do want to show you is you can plug the RV into your home and I'm walking you along your cable. This is what they call a dog bone, this piece right here. And this converts the power from your house outlet to your big plug is a 50 amp. So when you go to um, RV parks, you're gonna need to tell them you have a 50 amp RV. Most RV parks have 50 and 30 amps, but some of their power stations in some places will only have one or the other. But this is how you can plug it into your house to keep your battery charged and just be able to do things like we're doing right now where I'm demoing the RV to you and we're gonna do another clean. Um, we're gonna clean it again here and tomorrow, either later today or tomorrow, it just depends on how motivated I feel. But that um, plugging it in to the house like that, warning, do not turn on anything other than the light sources because the, especially the air conditioners and the heaters, they will not um, power through that dog bone. You're, you're gonna pull too much of a draw off your house and you can end up doing some serious damage to your air conditioning unit, so you don't wanna do that. The seals, I'm looking at them right now, they all look really good. We have an appointment next week to drop the RV off and just have the seals checked by a professional and if any need to be redone, we're just gonna have them go ahead and do that and then winterize the unit for you. And then we'll de-winterize de it when we meet you in January, that way you can use it. So here's one of your exterior doors that I opened for you. And again, that's one of those slam, slam doors is what they call them. And they magnet up so you don't have to worry. I've had RVs before where I've had to hold the door open or let it sit on my head while I've gone inside. On the video, I'm noticing that this opening does not look very large, but it actually, it is quite large and you have extensive storage space. This is what I was talking about when it comes to leveling the RV. This is what you want to use. And this is just like um, building blocks, if you will. And I'll show you how to do that when we meet in January. We are providing two hoses. We use one, this one is a flush hose or an extension hose, and then we have a really good heavy duty hose with this hose reel. And inside here, either here in our toolbox, it's in our toolbox, we have the water regulator so you don't blow out your water lines um, based on pressure um, at different RV parks. We have some pieces and parts here. These are additional parts and pieces that came with the RV, like a traditional stand for your television, an extra um, shower curtain holders, uh, shower towel, towel rack 
holders and things of that nature in case you'd like to install those that's all new that stuff has never been used and then we have the hoover all-in-one wet dry vac with the charging station and the battery and then the rinse and storage tray and we have some of the um chemical and stuff for you the chemicals inside i'll show that to you i'm going to leave this open right now because i want you to see um, how you can access this area from the interior under the bed. So I'll show you that in a moment. Under this port, which is really gonna be hard to see in the video, but under this point here with the slide out, you're going to have your gray water holding and your sewer outlet connection and your black water tank. And that looks like this. So you're gonna to wanna to hook this up before you put your slide outs out. But this is your gray tank, see gray handle. And this is your black tank, see the black handle? And you have one port here. This is a godsend that they split this up because your sink water has its own tank. And that way you don't have to worry when you're doing a lot of dishes, prepping food, showering, and or um, using the toilet, you don't have to worry about everything going into one tank or the black tank and one gray tank. So you're gonna have more tank capacity with this RV. You've got windows on both the slide outs and I've opened this window for you so you can see what an open window, this isn't open all the way, I just did this so you could get an idea of how these windows open. They flap so you're gonna wanna make sure when you do a walk around before you go somewhere that these are secure and this is why I left this open like this so you could see that you don't want this flapping when you're going down the road. The window could rip off and obviously it's going to damage the RV and the window will be gone and broken but it also could damage somebody else's vehicle. These are more traditional windows where they have a clip on either side and you just lift up the bottom piece and they have screens. You just may not be able to see them in the video. Okay coming around this is gonna be your eating area. The windows are all tinted, by the way, so it's very difficult to see into the RV, unless, of course, it's pitch black out and all your interior lights are on and all your <laughs> shades are up. That'll be a different story. Here we've got another door, that magnet slam door. Oop. And clicks into place. And this is where we normally store everything for towing. So we put the hitch head in here. Um, these are your level or bars, and this is your sway control. And this is to help you in case there's tension. This is to help you um, lift up on the leveling bars. But we will uh, we'll go through all this with you. It'll be much easier. We can show you how to hook up to your vehicle when we get together. And that door on the other end, that goes into the kitchen. And above, right here, is one of the seats and this actually this plywood comes up and when you remove the seat padding and the plywood you can access this entire area from the interior you don't have to just come out here or go through the narrow doorway in the interior so that's this door here and i'm going to leave it open so you can see from the inside when i open the door and then you've got another large window here in the slide out for your eating area so that covers, I think, everything I can think of. Oh, nope, nope, I thought of something else. The slide outs in this RV, if you've noticed, see how they have the awnings over them? I will never buy another RV that does not have this feature. These will, these will roll up automatically when you bring your slide outs in, and therefore, if you have any twigs or anything that's been on top or leaves, on top of the RV, dead insects, you name it, or live insects, even worse, right? Um, they will not enter the RV when the RV comes back into, I mean, when the slide out comes back into the RV. So there's peace of mind there. Mm, drain, drainage lines, you'll see when it rains. It's uh, like a little um, system in your house that takes the water and instead of it rushing over your doors, it'll just spit out right there. There's in the front, in the back. I forgot to show them to you in the back. This is your awning and I'm gonna extend it real quick because the wind has died down a little bit. Coming up to the control pa panel here and you'll see your awning extend and retract. 
gonna go ahead and extend the awning all the way and you will see, I'll show you where to stop. If you look at the corner, you're gonna notice that little flap that's just starting to drop down. What they say, it's okay if you go beyond that, but when you store an RV or when you're hanging out in an RV, you don't want to have the RV be too far out with that flap. You want it to pretty much just hang straight down. So you just play with the position till it's about right there. And then I'm gonna bring it back in a little bit because of the rain. One feature I don't wanna leave it out to show you, but I'll explain to you is, ooh, if I can walk and talk at the same time without falling over. When this is fully extended, you don't wanna leave it out in the rain or in heavy wind, but let's just say it's a light rain. You actually can just reach up and it'd be easier to demonstrate if I had two hands, but you just reach up and you pull down, depending on if you want that side or this side to be lowered a little bit. And then you crank down and hold it in place with this nut. And that way it'll put a little slope into the awning and the water will just run off in whatever direction that you pull down on. So that's a really unique feature in order to make sure that you don't have water build up in the RV awning and then have it collapse. Oh, I did forget when I showed you the stairs, we just bought these new rubberized catch-all um, uh, stair covers, but you can't put one on the top one because it doesn't line up with the holes with the way the wiring goes through. It doesn't wrap around the stair because that's attached. So I just wanted to point that out. You've got your safety feature here. You got your uh, fire extinguisher and you've got your control panel. I'll go through this real quickly with you because it'll make more sense when you actually put your hands on it and get to use it. But when we talked about the water heater out there and that one little switch, as soon as you arrive at a location, you'll throw both water heaters on and that way you get more hot water and you'll see all the little lights work. I'm just gonna flip them on really quick though because I don't wanna draw a lot of extra power. You have an electric water heater and a gas water heater. And then this is your pump. And we talked about this a little while ago with that water source where I said you can hook your garden hose up and put water in your tank while you're traveling. When you open the RV to stop somewhere, if you had food in the fridge and you wanted to have a little lunch or you wanted to use your own bathroom and then flush the toilet and wash your hands, you just go ahead and you throw this pump on and then you'll be able to use all of your features. You don't have to worry about being plugged in to have your water circulate in the RV. So that's what the pump is for. This tank heater is amazing. It's a great feature to have because underneath where your gray and black tanks are located, that is um, a heater that's going to keep them from freezing. So if you decide to stay somewhere where it's cold, you don't have to worry about the tanks or the water's water in the tanks freezing up, which brings me back outside because I did fail to show you the second gray tank, which like I said, you wanna make sure you hook up to it first before you put your slide out out. But that is specifically a gray tank just for your kitchen sink. So you have your own line, you can hook up two, ho two um, I, I call them poop hoses, but Put the two hoses together and then you have what they call a joiner or a Y connection that goes into the port at the into the sewage system at the uh, RV park so put my sunglasses down okay so back to your um, control panel I showed you the awning extension and retraction You've got a Wi-Fi booster here, and we have the instructions for that in with all the manuals. This was the step light you saw outside. This is the awning light, which you can see runs the whole length of the awning. Your porch light is the one, the orange one. I think you can see it on the side behind the front door, front exterior door. And then your interior lights are all the ones that are mounted to the ceiling and there's additional lights that you would turn on manually which you can see that that light's still on and that light's still on and I'll I'll walk you through those as we go. Your slide out in and your slide out out are for slide out one and two. So slide out one is this living room slide out. It comes up first as you engage it and then it starts sliding towards you and going back out. You always wanna make sure you check before you move it that there's nothing in the way 
and you're gonna hear a really funny noise right now as it locks. Don't worry about that. You just don't wanna keep it making that noise, but that's letting you know that she's hit her max. And you have the same thing for the slide out in the bedroom. Now you've got all of these different levels that you can check, right? So your battery, you can see your battery charge is full and you can do the same thing and go up your tanks and it will tell you where um, you are with your tanks. You've got a fresh water tank, which we still have water in, but very, very low. And that's only because I'm gonna do another cleaning and turn the pump on. Um, you got a black tank, gray tank, and gray tank too. So the gray tank is the one in the um, front, and then the gray two is the one in the rear. This is your RV Comfort controller. This has two, the only button I'm gonna press right now, because this is hooked up to the house, is the zone button. You can see you have zone one and it's off, and you can see you have zone two and it's off. But you can change the systems from AC, fan, auto, heat, the whole nine yards, everything is done right here, and then temperature control adjust, and we have all the manuals, so you don't have to stress out about any of that. This is your kitchen. You've got your pantry over here, which can be turned into a coat closet if you wanted to. You've got your freezer and refrigerator, which I'll show you in a moment. Great feature about that is you can do um, traveling. You can keep food cold while you're traveling by switching it to propane, and I'll show you how in just a moment. You've got a microwave, which actually is larger than the average microwave for an RV. You'd be happy to see that. This is the fan that I showed you that I opened the flap outside for you. This is your fan, which won't come on right now because there's not enough power. And the light for, there you go, your range. You've got the only metal, um, what is this thing called, blind, is in this RV, is in the kitchen because of, for food purposes. It comes all the way down, which I've never used it like this before, but um, when you travel, you'll stop right about here. You'll lock it into place so it doesn't swing, which I can't really do with one hand. There we go, maybe I can. Not giving myself enough credit. Um, yep, yeah, it's a little bit harder when you get the second side in. And, come on, where is she? Oh, and I don't have my reading glasses on, there we go. So when you're traveling, you're just gonna lock her into place and you've got an easy to clean metal blind in your kitchen. And then when you arrive, you just unclip it. And then I always just pull this and just wrap it like that when it, when I've stopped. So that way it doesn't hang into the um, stove top. So now you've got your stove and your oven. The oven is amazing and huge, which I say huge because RV ovens are usually half the size. This one is double the size of the normal RV standard. And you've got a glass cooktop. It also provides some prep space. And then you've got three burners with quite a bit of distance in between. So you can use larger pots and pans, which I appreciate being Italian. If you lift up on this, it makes it really nice to clean. It's one piece. This is one piece. And now you can see how easy it is to wipe down the surface. So it makes our deep clean when we're done with a trip much more simplistic. So that is your stove and oven and microwave. Now to your freezer fridge, you wanna be very careful. Um, you can break these handles really easily. If you just grabbed this and just yanked it, you'd snap this right off. You just wanna make sure you have a nice light touch. It's just a light release, light release, and it pulls open, but it does click and lock into place when you shut it. You've got the freezer, which may not look like a lot of space. It is. You've got adjustable shelf here, 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 depending on where you want to place things. These shelves are all adjustable. You've got locking mechanisms that help hold this door cracked. There's three of them in here, by the way. You put one in the freezer and you put one in the, you can see the little slot, well, maybe not the way I'm filming it but you put this in place and then when you click it, it leaves it gap open so that you don't get mold growing in your fridge and freezer when you're not using it. So your freezer, a lot of stuff can fit in here. And trust me, in this fridge, 
you can get a lot of food. You have the adjustment for your temperature up here. You just slide this up and down, this little piece of plastic. And you've got a drip pan here that goes, if you can see, to the exterior. So that just slides into place, which is a lot easier, I'm sure, to do with one hand. The refrigerator does have a light when it's powered on when you open, but the freezer does not. I've never had a problem being able to see into the refrigerator. You've got drawers down here, and that is your fridge and freezer. So when you're getting ready to travel, what you're going to do is you're going to come up here to your freezer, and you're going to turn your freezer, your unit on, right? So you're going to, I just turned it on. Look, the light just came up, okay? I'm going to turn it off. I just did that just to show you. And you're going to either push that in. When you push that button in, it means it's operating off of power. When you have it kicked off, I mean kicked up like that, it's really it's much easier to feel and see in person than on the video. It'll be on gas. So right now, that's on for power, which we I'm not turning it on all the way because that's over here. But that's set for gas. And when I turn it on, I don't know if you saw that, but that little light came on and it said check. The reason it's doing that is because the propane is shut off right now. If I open the propane, this would start cooling down, the fridge and the freezer. And you wanna do that about um, eight hours before you travel, so the night before basically. That way when you wake up in the morning, you can load your food and be on the road with your refrigerator and freezer being chilled by propane and keeping your food fresh uh, while you're on the road. So that's a, just a great little feature to have. Um, and that is what we call the uh, propane electric um, fridge freezer. And we'll go over that again in more detail. Down below, you've got your circuit breakers and your fuses. Everything down here is labeled, so that makes that easy. At this down here is just a vent right for the oven and the stove. Your cabinet below your sink obviously has your trash can. We custom ordered this. I know that sounds funny, but the little triangle one to fit into this space. This is the area that I told you where your griddle and everything is located. Um, we're leaving you with the pieces and parts, the little um, trays and, and stoppers for the bathroom and the um, kitchen. Some multi-surface cleaner for the Hoover all-in-one and some scented Febreze trash bags that fit this trash can. Coming up to the sink, my little staging soaps. <laughs> You've got some prep space um, racks or drying racks for when you do dishes. And when you move those, you'll see you have two large sinks with um, little food catcher trays. That's why the... Um, strainer drains were in that plastic bag below because we keep these in place when we uh, travel. Your um, sink is nice and uh, taut, your faucet, so you'll notice it takes a little bit to move that. And boom, it extends. It's really decent. And it's got a, um, for especially for an RV sink, it's got two sprayer settings. It's got the one that sprays like a shower and the one that runs like a normal kitchen sink back behind the sink you have an outlet and here's one of your manual lights there's a little button in the middle you just pop that on so you put these back in place and when you arrive somewhere I just tuck those under the sink but they're great for traveling so when I do travel this is what I do and then you don't have to worry everything's put away I showed you before all the storage in the photos, but you have a huge storage space here. This storage space goes all the way back, which we um, had, we stack paper towels in there and it goes the whole length to the wall right here. And then you've got all of the storage space, which by the way, fits very large plates. It doesn't look like a large space, I'm sure on this video, but this, um, this whole space here fits large, large plates. Not talking you know, huge serving platters, but we have varying size plates and we've never had an issue. You've got your drawers, three of them for silverware. We're including um, 
ex extra, these are, trust me, extra screws. They're not parts that fell off. Um, and a handle, this goes with the couch set. Um, and I can show you that in a moment for just uh, tightening down certain things within the couch. This tray you might want to use, it came with the RV, but we ended up buying a different one, which you I'm sure saw, <coughs> excuse me, in our photos. And your third drawer, which by the way, I don't know if you can tell, but they're clicking in place for traveling. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you have all the storage underneath, which is a lot of room. And it all passes through, by the way, so you're not losing space with walls in between. And then this is your carbon monoxide detector. So... <coughs> It's a great feature and your gorgeous, gorgeous front kitchen window with your blinds. <coughs> I am so sorry. I have a tickle in my throat. The blinds here are in every window are fabric, like I said, except your metal blind over your stove for cleaning purposes. But every single window has a double blind. So when you reach up here and you grab this other piece of plastic and you pull down, you go from a day shade to a nightshade. Now, here's a way to test it. You can no longer see my neighbor's car across the street. If I take the nightshade and raise it, now you can see her vehicle. And then you just grab the base here and you push all the way up and it stores the, um, the shade itself. You've got an outlet over here, depending on how you want to live. We found the coffee maker was perfect right in this corner. And USB charging ports, they have those in the bedroom as well. Got the window with the same dual shade, right? Day shade here, night shade here. You can bring them down all at once if you want, or one at a time. You know, they're fabric. You run them back up from night shade, day shade so on and so forth. Then you've got your living um, or your dining room area, eating area. What's great about this, and like I said, when we were outside, is if you remove, these are Velcroed in place, which is super handy. You remove your cushions and then you can lift up on both sides your seating area and you can access all the storage underneath. Or if you prefer, if you just needed something that was at the very front, you can just access it. Oops, sorry, I don't want to turn it because it will change the whole video. You can access it through this front door right here. So that is super handy. And then you just put these back into place. This kitchen table folds down and it goes into the stoppers down here. There's four of them. One, two, three, and four. And this will fold down and hit those stoppers. And then you collapse all of the cushions. You lay them flat. You piece them together. And you've got yourself a bed. And it's actually pretty dang comfortable. Um, here's another drawer. Now this drawer looks short. And you might say to yourself, well, what about all the access and all the storage you had on the other side? It's the same thing. You go ahead and you move this off and you lift the um, seating area and you have all of that storage space as well. The only difference there is you actually have to access that part in the back, that I guess three quarter um, area, three quarters of that area through the top. Um, this is one of your emergency exits as I lift the day shade. So you've got this handle and you just shove that really hard and it pushes out. You pop the um, screen out and you just jump through. That is one of your two emergency exits. Up here, you've got more storage. These are all your manuals. It's a very thick package. <laughs> and that all will make sure you get all of those with the RV. And this is a storage area, which once again, didn't waste any time with the interior walls. It's, you're gonna get 100% of that space for storage. 
Again, another window, another window, day and night shades, and your two recliners. These recline out flat all the way, and these are not your only two cup holders. What you'll notice here is you've got two swivel tables. This one doesn't swivel as much as I'd like. So what I do with this one, you just pop them up for when you travel. You just put it in this way, so that way you get as much space as you can and can get in and out easily. And you just pick this up. You wanna make sure you put these away when you're traveling. And normally, I just place them down here in this drawer when we travel. And that way they're stowed and safe and they're not gonna swing around and do any damage. Now, the chairs are epic because they have this handle, which is really hard to display to you um, when you're not sitting in it. But when you pull this, the whole recliner piece pops out. And like I said, it goes full recline. You've got heat, a light for the cup holder, and massage. And the, it's got, I think, three or four massage settings and three or four heat settings. And that's in both chairs. And both of them work. There's no issues whatsoever. The RV is just, like I said, it's a 2020, so it's not old enough to have any issues yet. Um, let's see. Oh, two more cup holders here. And then that little device that I just showed you is for um, cranking down. What is it? That little wrench, now I forgot what it was for, but um, it was kept in here and it was for tightening something down. Maybe it had to do with the TV. Anyway, in case some stuff came loose, but you've got it in case you need it. This is um, another port area. So you've got an outlet and two USB charging stations inside this really big storage area between your seats. Super comfortable, love these recliners. Over here, you're gonna see you've got a TV that when you're driving, it pops into place. And then when you stop, it's on a swivel mount. That was my finger, I just jammed against the wall. It's on a swivel mount, so depending on where you're seated and what you wanna watch, and you can see that it comes way out from the wall. One of the things I did was I put heavy duty Velcro over here. You've got your IRV Technologies remote, which powers your surround sound and everything that you want for your sound input, and then your television remote. You will notice behind your TV, you have your satellite connection from your receiver, and you've got all of your connections for your cable TV, so on and so forth, which brings me over, once I pop that back into place, to the actual, um, not satellite, the uh, antenna for uh, above. And it's fixed antenna as far as it doesn't raise or lower, so you don't have to worry about um, screwing that up when you get ready to leave as far as travel's concerned. But they do, they do um, recommend that you just rotate it for travel by pushing in and making sure this direction that it comes to a stop. And that helps a lot. Um, your air conditioning unit, real quick before I forget, this is AC1. So this is going to be the air conditioning for the living and dining area. And there's one in the bedroom, which you always wanna make sure you buy an RV with multiple air conditioning units, just for the simple fact that if you're traveling when it's really warm, they are going to be really loud until they cool the RV to your desired temperature. And this way, if you're trying to watch a show, and when I say really loud, not to the point where you're screaming at each other, but it's just, it can be annoying from time to time if you're irritated or whatever, maybe. So we will crank the one in the bedroom, which will cool the entire RV as well, and then just leave this one on auto select for the temperature we want. That way we can watch a show and not have to turn the volume up. So that's the television. You've got additional outlets here. There's outlets all over this RV. And then you get to your sur surround sound for system one and your IRV technologies control, which this has blue, this is Bluetooth capable and um, uh, everything. You can hook your phone, your computer, everything through this. You got HDMI and USB, you name it. So, of course, there's not a song playing, which would be nice. Oh, maybe, maybe they will. Um, so I have all the zones turned on right now. So zone one is the living room. If I turn that off, I know you can probably hear that. And if I open the bathroom door, 
it's playing in zone two. And zone two is the bedroom. That's why zone two is blue. If I turn zone two off and I crank this, you can hear outside from the exterior speakers. So, oh, look at that war eagle. We're in Alabama territory now. Ben Harling and Brad Law, I'm Andy Bertram. And now it's turning all zones on. So, quite powerful, three zones and a DVD obviously, and you hold it, says standby, and she's off. The fireplace is amazing. I love this fireplace for one reason, and that is she can either put out heat or not, so you can use her for warmth or for ambiance or both, which is great. So you have all these little controls right here that I'll show you when you arrive, but you power it on. You can turn off the heat but leave the flame on. The flame changes sha our shape. It changes size and it also um, changes color. So that's really cool. I enjoy that part of it. it. Makes for romantic trips. You've got two doors. One goes right into your bathroom on this side, and this one goes right into the bedroom. You can leave them open if you want, and it's not that big of a deal. Depends on when you stop, what you like to see or not see, maybe. Um, you got your bathroom, it has your ceramic toilet. So that's that's full-blown residential. The only thing we didn't upgrade because we didn't get to it was we wanted to replace the seat from plastic to residential. So that might be something you want to look into. You got your light switch right here, one of your towel bars. You've got a fan for those stinky moments. There's different settings. You open this up and turn your fan on. And over here, you got your toilet paper holder, a couple hooks for towels, and then the shower, which is actually quite roomy. I don't know if it will show in the um, video, but you also have a skylight. It brings in a lot of natural light, and we upgraded to the shower head because I had it in one of the RVs that I owned previously and loved it. And the one that comes with the RV is not, not so much, not so much. Um, you've got a mesh bag here to hang some things like razors or whatever, and a lot of little ledges. Um, don't know, you know, what your routine is or what your product line looks like, but definitely some stuff where you play, you know, uh, places where you can put things. And then obviously you could always use the floor because we put some of our larger product down there in the left corner. Uh, don't know if you're going to be doing a lot of off, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, off the grid. But this little switch right here, we have the book. You flip this switch in order to hold your water while it's getting the, the heated water to the faucet, to the shower head. So if you were to just run this and run it hot and wait for it to get hot and, and pipe through, you're going to waste water. And this, this little switch does that for you so it will preserve the water it will get hot this when it's ready will change color and let you know it's ready boom then you can turn on the shower and you won't waste extra water if you're dry camping your shower doors move really easy they've got a magnet strip they come together they click when you travel you always want to make sure that you put the little rubber handle over and you close it and you travel with everything closed or, you know, if Eric ticks you off, Deborah, <laughs> you can always just lock him in the shower until he behaves himself while he's getting ready. <laughs> just joking, Eric. So there's the shower. Over here, you've got your mirror for your vanity and storage. And then there's a lot of space up here where we put things once we arrive at a destination and we get nested. Little secret compartment here where we put the base of our power toothbrushes and storage underneath as well for toilet paper and wipes and all that type of stuff um, and your toilet pods that you're going to need and another outlet for hair dryer or curling iron, whatever it is that you might use. You've got your door, which I love this feature for when you travel, you can travel with it closed. If you're using it, you can close and lock it. Not a very secure method, right? But um, you can travel or leave it open and lock it in this position. So that I think covers everything in the bathroom. Gosh, that seems like a lot for a little RV bathroom. And then when you get to the bedroom, I know this is not the bedding you saw in the pictures, but this is the bedding that came with the RV. So we just threw it back on there. 
you've got your bedroom with storage. And this is slide out too, by the way, and it's the same type of storage. It passes all the way through with these really cool textured um, on one side and tinted glass doors. I love those. You will notice that you have your little end tables and a little extra end table and you can look, walk almost all the way around the bed so that you can get seated or grab something off your nightstand without being stuck. You're not up against a wall, which is something that is amazing when it comes to the RV lifestyle. You always want to make sure you can get around a bed. You have reading lights. I failed to <clears throat> point these out. These are like aircraft lights. You just push them and they, they move. There's two of these, um, one over each of the recliners as well. And you just push on the light, push it up, and it goes out. And there's one on the other side of the bed as well. Another awesome feature, you've got an outlet, USB charging ports, and another set of outlets over here on that side of the bed. And then on the, this side, you've got another set of outlets. So you can leave your phone or tablet or whatever you're going to take to bed, um, you know, charging at night. So this is a different angle from your bedroom. I'm gonna, I have a lot more to show you, so don't worry. I just wanna kind of give you an idea with the video because I have not panned the room yet. You've got your day and night shades in the bedroom as well. And this is your other emergency exit. So once again, like we showed you in the other, with the um, other window, the seal sometimes will get you. You can leave it open if you're just chillaxing, but if you need to get out, you would shove this all the way out. Like I talked about with the other window and you pop your screen out of place and you would use this as an exit and obviously jump on the spare tire and get out of the RV if you needed to. So you have two emergency exits. Just keep that in mind. Got a lot of headspace. I'm five, seven, five, seven and a half. And I'm touching, you can be six foot. I just had a gentleman in here, um, showing him because he and his wife are interested in buying one, not yours. Don't worry. They're our neighbors. And because they've seen ours out here, they're, they're starting to get the bug to get an RV. So I just walked them through and showed them. And he's 6'2", and he didn't have to duck his head at all. So I don't know how tall both of you are, but if that gives you any peace of mind, it gives you an idea of the ceiling height. Right here, you have your TV backer that the um, dealership, right? The uh, put not the dealership, but the manufacturer, put your TV backer marker. So if you wanted to mount a TV there, you can. And then you've got your bedroom, um, your outlets and your bedroom satellite slash cable. So you can put that in the corner. So when you're looking, I would put it on a swivel mount as well. If you're in the bed, you'll be able to watch TV. Now your closet is amazing. And I've left this open so you can see it. And then I'll show you in a moment the mirrored doors while they're closed. But this closet is very long and actually has quite a lot of space. When you close your mirror, you got full length mirrored doors. That's a lot. I'm not sure if the video is going to do it justice. Now, when you get ready to travel, you want to make sure the door is locked in place, especially because this is mirrored. But you just use your thumb and you push open on the plastic and it releases. What I do when we travel is once I get to a location, so I don't always have to mess with the clips, I put the doors off. So see how the track, I moved one door from one side to the other, and that way I don't always have to worry about the clips when I wanna access the closet. I can just grab it and move it. Underneath the closet, you've got four drawers that click in place as you can hear. And just show you. And then this door I've unscrewed and left open for you so you can see. This is not for storage. This is your water pump and filter access. This is the device you'll use when you change your water filter. We will install a new one for you. And we replaced all these lines because we've learned the hard way when we've bought RVs in the past that sometimes manufacturers don't use the highest quality for their water lines. So we had all these replaced at the dealership. So you should knock on wood, not have any issues with water whatsoever or water problems, unless you do something like let it freeze and a, you get a, um, a cracked pipe or 
if you don't, if you hook up your water source without using the regu the pressure regulator, you can blow out a line. Um, but you shouldn't have any problems just, you know, doing normal RV practices for a very long time with all that new installation. And then this door does close and I have the two screws that go um, with it in my pocket right now. I just did this so you didn't have to, I didn't have to waste time on the video unscrewing the door for you to see. What I used was a Velcro strip, the um, command strip with Velcro, and I had those on there rather than the screws in place. That way I could access the um, water filter if I needed to without having to mess with it. Now, secret hiding compartment. You lift up, you've got the little easy lift jacks over here, and you can see your storage outside area, all the way to the outside. You can access certain things. Obviously, it'd be harder to get things that are closer to the outside door, but you can access things from underneath the bed. And it's super easy to lift. There's even a handle. I don't know if you can see that handle there and you've got more storage with these drawers under the bed. So your whole storage compartment space in this bedroom is quite large, as you can see. I'm gonna shut these, lock them in, Oop. and grab the handle, push down the bed. Don't let this slam because it is quite loud, but you let that close gently and that is the bedroom. Here's your light switch here that turns on, like I said, your lights that are hooked up to your ceiling. Your second air conditioning unit right here, and we, this is just really easy. We always clean these vents. It's easier to do with one, I mean, two hands, but grab this, pop it open, take the filter out. We clean them after every trip. And then you've got your surround sound that I played for you earlier. It comes into the bedroom here. We placed a little command hook here for you. So a little extra, extra bonus there. And then this is your thermostat for your bedroom. And then the exit from the second door goes out to the RV and you can see your awning. The wind has really died down, but I don't want to take any chances with a surge. And then let me demonstrate for you what it looks like when you're going to operate a door from the interior. So you just saw me slide that when I stepped out. You shut your door, you lock your door, you can't open your door. You unlock the door and you open the door. You can push that however you want it. And then if you just want the screen and you keep the bugs out, and this is also really handy because if somebody's grilling or needs you to hand something like, hey, can you hand me, you know, whatever, my drink, my beer, you can just pass it through and you don't have to worry about swinging the door open. Just another little handy thing. And both doors, like I said, operate exactly the same way. So you come around through here. I'll point out just a couple imperfections. I'm hoping we'll get fixed before um, we uh, do the do the deal in January. But I've got this, this one little mark right here, which they'll probably just put a little color on. Got this one little dent in the handle right here, which I thought was gonna drive me crazy, but I never notice it. And then we've got this one little teeny mark right there, which again, will just probably be a little bit of color. And we've got this one little teeny dent, or, or not dent, little mark right there, which will probably just be a little bit of color, but that's it. That's it for imperfections. Other than that, I can't think of anything that's wrong with the RV other than it's a little dusty at this juncture, but I'm gonna be taking care of that here in probably another hour. Um, trying to think, did I miss anything? I, just to recap, let me show you your pantry, which can be turned into a um, coat closet if you wanted it to. Don't know if I showed that to you or not but I think I did. And then we put another little hook here. I bet you can imagine what for. And that's, by the way, that's on a Velcro um, piece as well. So you can pop that off real easy. A command strip Velcro, dog leash. <laughs> so your pupper will already have a place um, 
for the leash for long walks when you are living your best life in your new RV. I hope I covered everything. Um, if you have any questions after you watch this video, uh, just shoot me a text or message me or an email or whatever the case may be. And if you want to see something again up close, let me know. Don't worry about memorizing anything that I told you about as far as operations and things go because we'll go over all that. We'll do a full walkthrough with you in January. And I will send you a list of things that I recommend you bring with you um, when you get ready to pick her up. Other than that, we've got all the tow hitch equipment like you were curious about, and I will show all of that to you as well when we get together. I hope this was helpful. I hope maybe it made your day and put a smile on your face. I know you're dealing with a lot right now, so maybe dreaming about vacations and decorating and nesting in your new RV will uh, bring you a little joy. So have a great night, and I'm going to go into the house after I screw that door shut, and I will... Uh, upload and send this to you. Can't wait to meet you guys in January. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.